scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There is a place for submission. And I took out time to explain to us that the purpose of authority is for protection, provision, and promotion. Nobody promotes himself. Is that true? And um, I know we are all in Christ, but the election of grace has separated people into strata. You violate God's system of blessing, you will pay for it. Everybody has access to the Christ, but God has designed that there is a system by which men receive results. One of it is authority. So there is an imbalance of authority where people do not have rights again. They don't have brains. Men of God become the gods of people. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when to have another child. They tell you, no, 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 all the, that is rubbish. It's just the insecurity of men on rampage. So they spiritualize it and carve out a group of people that can find victims of their insecurities. That's imbalance. Praise the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, if at any point you don't find me following Christ, do not follow me. I want us to be very, very clear about the concept of authority. There are many insecure men and women of God, well-meaning, but they carry their complexes from poor backgrounds. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know, Africa is a very loyal continent. We are loyal to men of God. We are loyal to pastors and churches. And sometimes it is that loyalty that has become the unbecoming of people. They were doing well until a man came into their life in the name of fatherhood and mentorship and wrecked and destroyed their life. They made people to leave jobs when they shouldn't leave jobs. They made people to not take drugs when they should take drugs. They made people to all kinds of things and destroy people's lives. Separated husbands and wives when they have no business separating because of some kinds of hilarious vision. So we must be careful. Submission is important. Authority is important. So that's one side of the imbalance. The other side of the imbalance is those who uh, in a bit to address what I just explained. Now tell people there's no such thing as authority. Everybody can access God. No. You fight the body of Christ, you lose. There is a system with which the church was built. Are we together? The Bible tells us that the church was built like a building. He said every house is built by some man. Then he says God is the builder of all. Our work with God is based on relationship, but kingdom advancement is based on covenant. And I've explained it to us. The way that God operates on earth is that all his multifaceted dimensions are resident within individuals. They become the portals through which the generation experiences that dimension of God. So prosperity, for instance, God finds a man, opens his understanding to an unusual dimension of God in that area and then makes that man a symbol, a portrait, a representation of that possibility so that every other man on earth who must enter that dimension must do it in alignment to both God and that system he has set up. You will never enter that dimension. You may believe in God, but if you do not believe in what that individual represents and submit to it, you will never enter that dimension. No man will work greatly in the healing ministry insulting Benny Hinn. 
no man will work greatly in prosperity and faith insulting Kenneth Copeland. Even if you believe you have more revelation than him, he's more than a human being. He's a system that communicates a dimension of God's reality. The Bible is full of mysteries. And um, I wish I had time. I don't want to go back to walk all of those. Remember, there was a time when the nation of Israel wanted to fight war. They were fighting war and moses these guys had their swords but behind the scene there was a man who was lifting his rod is that true the bible says as he lifted the rod although the people were the ones doing the physical fighting but the results were controlled by one man's hand now watch this the bible says a time came when moses's hand was getting weak the wisest thing to do is to say sir you're an elder just sit down let me help you is that not true the wisest thing to do is to help the man. Not everything can be done by everybody. Ask Saul why he lost his throne. He said, what is there? Somewhere we can't be waiting for you. Are you so special? Give me the knife. And when Samuel came, he said, Saul, what have you done? He said, you would have allowed me come. God would have preserved your throne forever. But now you have done foolishly. Today, by this foolish act, violating rankings in the spirit, your throne is taken from you. Authority is real. Not everybody you see is a pure human being. I don't know how to make you believe this, but it's true. For this cause, many are weak. Many are sick. People's pride has stopped them from entering simple, cheap victories because of their refusal to understand authority. It's not human worship. There are some battles that are needless if you fight them. If you fight those, if you ever fight those battles, it's because you are not wise. Are we together? Yes. Truly speaking, there are some battles that are products of foolishness. Moses' hand began to go down. The Bible never said their sword stopped being sharp. Just because a man's hand was going down, they started defeating them and they said, look, whatever we would do to support your position for the sake of our victory, we'll do it. I know what many people in our generation will do. Moses, you are not the only one God is talking to. Please help me with that rod, Jerry, and hold it and watch the rod kill you first. It looks simple until you see what is happening in the spirit. A man can say, God prosper. You say, what is there? Is it not just positive conversion? You too, God prospers you and then you don't see any result. Hmm. The law of authority. All the blessings of God come through the scriptural chain of authority. It is from Aaron's head down to his beard. Then it goes down to his skirt. Praise the Lord. When authority is done properly, it produces wonders when there is any violation of it whether on the part of the supposed spiritual father or on the part of those who submit to that grace there will always be problem proximity is not submission availability hanging around a grace is not genuine submission submission is not weakness please listen understand this it is not a proof of weakness only a foolish man of god will take advantage of people because of their submission to his grace are we together the law of authority learn it use it command cheap victories in your life it's not idolatry when it is done within the confines of scripture it is not idolatry number three we have a lot to do today the third price that we must pay to produce extraordinary results is the price of mental transformation. The price of mental transformation. Numbers chapter 13. Please help us media. It's a long reading from verse 25. The price of mental transformation. The sacrifice of upgrading your paradigm. The laborious sacrifice through the agency of the word and every other material whose thoughts are consistent with the word. Take note. First the word of God, scripture, and then every other material, intellectual material whose thought line is consistent with the word of God qualifies to be an instrument 
of mental transformation there are many believers who study the bible but they do not study the works of people who love god and who have paid the price to access these laws listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and caleb stilled the people before moses and said moses as far as i'm concerned this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. they are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight the anakims never say hey grasshopper 
the people call themselves grasshoppers the same way you call yourself um, a weak failure the same way you call yourself all kinds of things there is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results let me tell you nobody is born with a transformed mind transformation is a spiritual investment in case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again it is nobody is transformed by default ladies and gentlemen it is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding we've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding have taught us how paradigms are formed the first way paradigms are formed are through our cultural backgrounds we come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning we've lived among people who have been poor and broke we have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things we have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of god and unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm a set of belief a plane of interpreting things your reality is interpreted by your perspective and if you do not allow the word of god alter your perspective you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine listen i don't care what physical effort you are exerting your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset there are many people who have failed before they started it was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they call themselves the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about god what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or co or commit suicide I don't think I hate myself that much. Ah, I understand quarreling myself, but to hang yourself is, um, is, is quite, you must be assisted by a spirit. You become a reflection, a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts. The thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind 
I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of whatever. Just allow me to change and alter that person's mind. If I never see that person in my life again, I can tell you, staking my life that that person will be a success. Regardless of what his life is at that moment. Now here's the reverse. Accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind. Your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe. Are we together? Now let's do a little experiment. Look up. Don't feel bad. How many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels? You never cross 30,000 mark. If somebody blesses you with 200,000, it will finish and return back to that range. It, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron. You know how an iron is? You program it to be this hot. When it gets there, what happens? It breaks. That's it. There are people who will never cross 100,000. Give them one million. They will laugh only for one week. That money, the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way and manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are 100,000 allocators. So it's not enough to just claim and say I'm a millionaire. There is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind. It's like resonance in physics. Remember? Those who are science-based. There's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork, is that true? At a particular frequency, every other object within that environment that is the same frequency, without touching it, starts resonating. That's how it is. Every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency, mental level that calls it. When you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking, it cannot resonate to it. So your mindset must rise. Let me tell you, when it gets there, it will come in a heartbeat. Forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life. That's that's little issue. But we focus on who will bless me and how it will come. That's, that's not the issue. Just settle it in your mind. You have programmed yourself truly to be successful. When you want to know the true secret behind a man's result, don't look at the physical result. Understudy the understanding of that man. You see that? You get blessed from successful people, not just by benefiting from the result of their success. Unfortunately, that's what mediocres do. They are obsessed by the result. The tie, the shoe, the watch, the car, the um, anointing, the miracles, wheelchair. No, there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the Holy Spirit so that that kind of result be produced. When you have that construction, then you are ready for victory. The prize of mental transformation. Are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result? It doesn't work that way, sir. You will never, never be able to receive results at the mental states that brought the challenge that has pegged you. Let me tell you what challenges are. Challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level. The moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you. I teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I am there and I am real but your mental state now cannot take you there. Challenges are a letter from your future to you saying I exist, I am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding. I am passionate about God exposing my area of ignorance. It doesn't embarrass me. Some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area, it embarrasses us. You must be flexible enough to admit that where I am is a reflection of something I do not know. Are we together? Do you believe this? Apostle, I don't have friends. Everybody hates me. It's a lie. There is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality. Apostle, money comes and it disappears. Yes, there can be demonic issues, but the demons don't just come and act foolishly. They act upon a mindset that can host them. The day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence, that's the day you break free. 
that's why through deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon spirits it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of God does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance, the demons are in a hurry to leave. They mock you. Before you raise your hand, they go, knowing that their access point is still there. The door is open. Are we together? Something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation. There is a way Africa thinks. We have subsistent thinking. There is a way men of God think that don't give them results. There is a way they think that they get results. Please, every time you see a man of God, a system, a businessman, whatever, commanding results, don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results. But if you really want to receive, you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding. So the Bible says this, let this mind, permit this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, permit this mindset, this thinking, this construction, this set of understanding to be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And then things will respond to you the same way they responded to Jesus. Born around a manger, still didn't matter. Upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me I don't know what I meant prophetically or physically. He said, what business do you think I can do? I said, none. You will fail in every business you do, no matter how simple it is. And this is the reason. It's not because you are lazy. It is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default. Sincerity is one of the seeds for greatness. So you may be sincere. It's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize don't labor to show physical results you try to buy a shoe of hundred thousand to make a statement I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You'll be surprised that you'll never kick it on a wall. But in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person. Take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company. Put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? so things the mediocre what can i get not what can i give he will sit down watch television drink all the juice in the fridge snap himself take selfies and then try to what can i steal oh there's one carton of water if i take five nobody will know that's a mediocre that's the reason why he will remain where he is in two weeks he will turn that office into his mindset but take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rug to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan there is power when you set goals this is a renewed mind 
a poor man will say, I beg this Nigeria, I don't have any father anywhere and remain there. After one year, he has not been able to buy a rock. Something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are. Is that true? I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me. And I look at many things I do not know that is responsible for my current level of result. And so I continue to search, find out. If I know what Folorunsha Alakija knows, then I will be a billionaire in dollars. Correct? Listen, respect results. Don't trivialize results. Results are not luck, especially predictable results. Predictable result. Time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions. When you see a result that is sustained, it was based on laws. It wasn't based on magic. I can dash you one million, but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake. No, sir. It's a lie. I can lay hands on you temporarily, and you can even lay hands on someone in the wheelchair and leave the person. But brothers and sisters, you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace. The Bible never said the donkey talked forever. He talked for a moment and his mouth was shut. The Bible never said the rod bordered forever. Psalm 78 verse 41. A scripture that has become a national anthem in this place. It said, but they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. They were in the wilderness and they limited Him. Can God make a way? Can God make a way? Can God make a way? The Bible says they limited him. As mighty as God is. Brothers and sisters, we can limit him. Through our understanding, we can limit him. Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dick's Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Well, have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, when, what, our daily bread. Give us, this day, our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I released my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling. Rising up and falling. Your physic, you try to fake it, your mindset brings you back. That's what happened to many of our loved ones. I've told people, why fake something that can be real? You don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space 
continue to upgrade yourself in the name of Jesus I may have Gary today but I will feed nations and you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind there is he that stirreth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty ah so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come you write it in the name of Jesus I have no attachment to things when God brings them money is a slave and a servant never to become a God and a master I am a giver and then you study again and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so it's God that can make all grace abound that means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen it is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest are we together you begin to study you see the Bible says love never fails that means if there is anything that is failing in my life when I add love to it I can turn the results around so you construct your mindset let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say what are, are you the only one who is a Christian what is all these things where we are talking about all of this in I beg man must walk and he said no sorry I don't speak like that again with all due respect something is happening to me say eh hey, you you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary they are trying to pull you back say the devil is a liar say it again And they'll pull you back and say it's true let me go back jerry this coin only thing you are just talking like fools even god knows why will i lie i'm like that I'm, I'm not and you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state while people are watching football you buy a book 500 naira and you sit down when people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday when by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out Am, am I mocking movies? No, please don't, don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying, if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development, you will never be great. I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them, gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that God sent you and say go to America go to um, whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry well if you like be sleeping while I'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price I will be silly 
believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation I buy the truth and I sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? because they grew with that generation if you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be in ministry for a long time if you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they're interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people I foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job i have said it again and again I'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen Yes, you'll see it happen. We may not look like it now. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says, and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce. Filled with the Holy Ghost from age two. Why? Because a healthy mindset is the head of that family. Loving God because you understand the principles. That at age 60, you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and hefziba unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life and people ask you how are you doing it you say i can reproduce it again and again it was not luck 
pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able. Ten times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen. Don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you'll fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know, one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges, it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry. The day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business, all those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord. And again I say rejoice. And your joy will never have a reason to bend. When, when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing. Sometimes they say ah these people are lucky. If you know what those people are going through. Half it may kill you. But they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them. They understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit. You use it to draw from the wells of salvation. It's not circumstances that... Make, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Meaning when I lose joy, I lose strength. And Satan understands this. So he will orchestrate it. I thought you said you will enter a relationship by January. You even open your mouth and told people, Now is November, oh, my sister. And you just say, hi, how about God? There are many men in Koinonia now. Won't they see me? You are already responding to it. But the joy of the Lord. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. I thank you. Where is the God that brought the servant of Isaac to come and meet Rebekah? That same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? Among many things, praise and prepare. Mm. Praise and prepare. Is God blessing us? Yes. You will never, and I say it with all humility, you'll never see me putting my hand on my chin and say, Hi, life. You say, Why now? I say, Nigeria, you not seeing what is happening. I choose to be joyful. I choose to make merry. In my world, there is absolute peace. The world you talk about is the one your mindset created. Oh. In my world, there is peace and love and joy. 
Apostle, you see what is going on in this country? I know, but I know that there is a God in heaven. He was not dethroned. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. Apostle, are you hearing that? Terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere. Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. No. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, be joyful. Say to another, remain joyful. Amen. Yes. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. Abba, you say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Sand is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a sign you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say to me, please, prosperity confessor, Gary has finished. There is soup, but no Gary. I tell God there is already soup. Just help us with Gary. They try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving when we started out in ministry many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things and the lord told me just continue to rejoice and celebrate and hallelujah look what he's done and will continue to do by his grace make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful apostle nine o'clock my rent must be paid my brother anger will not pay rent your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some, what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> sir what are you thinking about saying my life i'm 20 i'm not in a relationship like, ah, are you joking what in the world is this what's what's wrong with you listen to our character building series work on your mind what did you watch which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience but when you see somebody rejoicing always happy you come back from koinonia i'm happy somebody's grumbling in the car you just say well god bless you you arrive home you are happy what will we eat well there may not be food and truly sometimes it can be painful but lord i give you all the praise how long will I keep dancing for as long as the answer comes? Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I will never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy. Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. So, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God I will hold on if I perish I perish if God said it I believe him is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. 
it didn't take you one day to build that understanding just continue with god apostle it's been three years i've been coming for coin only i can't even pay my transport don't worry the word of god is working the day the miracle will come not even your prayer will stop it god says it's too late when your mindset has built it now a day will come in one month you will see cars in koinonia you'll be like oh, it's a season it's not a season the, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with god take your okada with honor and give god praise the day to come it will come in a grand style i assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope at your level i was worse than how you look now so you better encourage yourself and say if i'm at this level and i'm already smiling like this it means when i get to a level higher than where i am is joy unspeakable and full of glory number four what's the third price is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and i add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding give it favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will Don Muen call you because of your voice? Have you worked upon yourself? What do you know about singing? The truth is that many of us, at least to an appreciable level, we have discovered areas here and there in our lives. But the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia, that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence. Everybody shout it after me, say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments 
I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from. I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields. Listen, anything you are doing, if you do not plan to be a leader in that field, don't do it. Are we together? I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in, whether it is ministry, whether it is business. You may start small, but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field. In the academia, the professor collects the highest salary. Why? Because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it. You may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker, but if you have not risen to that level of competence, you may never have the privilege of access. Make up your mind that I will be competent. Say it, I will be competent. Say it again, I must be competent. The law of value. Your value, when developed, decide who pursues you. Your value, when developed, decides who pursues you. Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward. Until there is a problem that you can solve, I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary. Herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you. When you are not valuable, you will not be a friend to anybody. Write this down. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Discover and develop problem-solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people. If they believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses. It may be true for some but it's not so for most. Men of God become blessed because they are offering value. That the value is spiritual in context. Now I am teaching you. Is that true? I'm reshaping your mind. I'm adding value to you. The system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value, whether you sell it or give it free, you are authorized to be rewarded. Are we together now? You only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life, whether financial and otherwise, and you cannot see the value equivalent. So when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates, I see the value equivalent. That's why we don't harass him. If I look at a criminal who is not offering any value, yet his bank account is fat, then I know that the equation does not balance. Before you ever criticize a blessed man, examine the value. Now, you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what he's doing is valuable enough to bring reward, but it still does not matter. Everybody say, I will be valuable. Say it again, I will be valuable. I will be skillful. Become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if i ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now i'm not only a man of god and many other things but most people know me as a man of god 
and they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do. There are many other aspects to my life. But there is always a skill that opens the door. That skill that brings you to the table of greatness. Then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting. Is that true? Yes. You must be valuable. Now, the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we were offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our gdp necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world where you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you May you be valuable. Being valuable will drive shame out of your life. I tell you this. Being valuable, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. It says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. There is a relationship between ignorance and shame. Are we together? There is a relationship. There is a correlation between ignorance and shame. Those who are angry, insulting every blessed person, insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings, their ability, their skill, their talent and to invest time, resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field. I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in, I will be flawlessly competent. It's a commitment I've made to myself. And I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. Become a master solution provider. There is no mystery about wealth. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It's a system, a reward system of the kingdom. Remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you. It must be developed. Everybody say developed. There is a season of refining your value. One gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk Obviously, that gentleman will not last one month. He will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going. You hear people complain. Why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away? And they think the solution is just prayer. Man of God, change my story. Yes, God can change your story. But the men of God or the men that come to your church are human beings. They respond to value. By the time you continue to give people informations that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, 
I mean, I can't even start. I mean, it was, it was, it was strange. And instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that guy and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, you mean it? I mean, that's, that's, he says, sir, this message is a, is a bestseller. And then the, mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you. They are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation. And if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth, spiritually and otherwise, then there's no reason why they listen to you. I've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person, well, well just a daft. No, 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 no. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of labor, research, commitment. I'm committed to doing it. This is the key to remaining relevant. Are we together? You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself, he said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one, but you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He, sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. That no, this is not competition. This is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, are you a Jew or you are this? <laughs> you have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee, shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us Yes, you can clap. Getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable. God programmed that way. Not everybody will produce the same result, but there must be a token, a token, a sign that you are going somewhere. And Joseph went over the land of Egypt. The last verse, how old was he? And Joseph was what? This is somebody's lifetime achievement. He did it at age 30. 
if you got born again at 30 you are behind time i teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the land of egypt your competence can give god space to lift you your competence can give god space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of jesus i declare i decree and i declare go ahead and pray lord i will rise in business i set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of jesus in my career i will rise to a managerial level i will not stop till i reach the apex i will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory i i declare that i break through it if i need to take certifications i set myself to personal development if i need to upgrade myself in knowledge i receive grace if i need seminars and training i receive grace if i need to submit myself consciously for mentorship i receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they knew hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth prize and will be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships 
I've taught you this. I'm repeating it so that you will understand. The easiest way to be blessed in life, brothers and sisters, is through relationship. Relationships are powerful. Relationships are irrefutable. There is no champion without quality relationships. Relationships are currencies. They can buy anything money can buy. Anything money can buy, relationships can buy it. The only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it. That human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it. I've said it again. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not working in wisdom. Now, money is only one of many currencies. Relationship being the highest at the Keda. Second only to godliness and your spiritual connection. Let me tell you something. Of all the currencies that men use to purchase results in life, physical money, notes, currencies is the least of them. There are seven currencies. I hope that by God's grace, I'll teach it next year. Seven currencies we use to purchase results in life. Everything in life is bought. It's just that money is not the only currency. Relationship is a priceless currency. Higher than gold. Higher than the dollar. Learn this. God called Abraham alone and Lot, who was related, went with him. That was the only thing Lot did and he became stupendously wealthy. Relationships can determine the next course of your results. And lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime. Please, I want you to learn this. The presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success. Lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime. You are one quality relationship, underline quality. You are one quality relationship away from your next level of results. Believe me on this. You are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results. You know all of this already. My emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships, but to be able to guide us on principles. I've noticed believers know very little about relationships. This is why many of us have been grounded, although skilled. A few scriptures, four of them. One, Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Please write it down. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Modern day interpretation, two cannot work together unless they be compatible. There must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding. Two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives. There must be similarity. You must believe similar things about God, about life, about money, about family. It qualifies you to be friends. Second scripture. Very, very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that hath friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother. Most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds. You don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant. Relationships are harvests. We must sow the seeds. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Read with me. One to read. He that walketh with the wise shall do what? But a friend of foolish friends. What will he get? It didn't say foolish people don't have a future. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you are a product of your environment. He that walks with the wise shall himself be wise. 
but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people say they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if, if you know i'm not just saying it for koinonia alone but this is something i've observed this is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide especially in the african continent we are obsessed with the passion to prove points and so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition men of god compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague of competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this proverbs 27 verse 4 many of us fall sick being envious of people listen very very powerful description look up please it says wrath is cruel that means it's not good don't do it anger is outrageous but compared you know in comparison who is able to stand before envy in other words envy is worse than anger wrath is cruel anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient 
until the word of God manifests in my life. I reject jealousy. I cast away jealousy from my life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. It will sting your ego, but brothers and sisters, this is God speaking. Pray. The spirit of competitive jealousy. I take it away from my life. Please pray. Envious of my workers at work. Envious of my business contemporaries. No. Envy is sin. It's not just bad. It is sin. Sin against yourself. You depress yourself. There are many people that don't sleep in the night. This lady was my junior in school. She's now married and I'm not married. You are envious. This person, I was the person that, that trained this person. He's now a millionaire. I'm no longer, I'm a pastor. This is my son. It's all those jealousy and envy. Kill it now. Lift your voice and pray. Shabbatato sekata. In the name of Jesus, I come against it. Satan, you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships. competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the bible calls it ill speaking statistically you can go and check it the top reasons why relationships break give us titus chapter 3 verse 2 please and then proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19 avoid gossip backbiting speaking evil unfortunately and with all due respect to the body of christ for some reason the church in nigeria i don't know if it's because of our african background we are experts at gossip experts at backbiting experts at speaking evil to speak evil of no man are we there to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit i'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up i'll read it these six things does the lord hate so god hates it these six things does the lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who 
you'll find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but I've, I've, do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will gist you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful that voice is ruin quality relationships. How many of you God wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and said, sorry, you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord? Sorry, I, I overheard somewhere that you like this lady. Are you, are you blind? I just came to advise you. Are you blind? This lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to pull those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always, you just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, who will cry before God first for yourself and say Lord I'm guilty I am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship I see how this guy is standing that, that's the guy I'm telling you hey you don't know that guy I saw him around that area yesterday he likes it he likes it what is your business for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising no i need to do something about it don't become like that ill-spoken words the appetite you see every time you talk bad about people i want you to remember that you are destroying god's creation you must stop it if put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership where experts are doing it it's a habit that I trust that God will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor Alpha God brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah I came to apostles house I saw him counting dollars <laughs> Don't, don't mind that quietness oh apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and God is saying you see this person, you are not a candidate for my help. Carry your trouble and go away. And say, ah, but God is going to help me. No. We have destroyed our lives. Destroyed opportunities. How many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet? Do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves? They have, it's an obsession. If there is nothing to talk about, you can even be the person to act the drama yourself. I beat my wife. I just want you to know honestly. And you see, listen, the thing about gossip and ill speaking, please listen, this is a lesson for all of us to learn. The thing about gossip is, it is like lost. Whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to. Including a child. Imagine me now coming to talk 
assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and uh -uh it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day wouldn't you be saying money easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice. It's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs 
that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that i will not be offended how many men of god get offended and they can preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you but you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness mark chapter 11 verse 25 then ephesians 4 32 please give it to us mark 11 25 practice forgiveness i don't know one relationship including the one of you and god that can thrive without forgiveness it's not god you are forgiving god is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with god okay i forgive you god let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when ye stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you 
Let me show you what offense does. Um, can I use someone? Sam, please come. Watch this. This is what offense does. I want to move forward, but I think Sam is standing my way. And so I'm trying to push him. Will I move forward holding him? I'm trying to hold Sam. I can't move forward myself. This is what forgiveness is. He can be there, not even deserving it. But I release him so that I can move forward. I can leave him and his trouble there. If he accepts that he is wrong and turns, then we make peace and we can work together. If he refuses, I still forgive so that I can move forward. Let me tell you, the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended. The person who was offended is the one who is most wounded. It is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset. So your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive. As a leader, people will offend you every day. People will do wrong things every day. You must forgive. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive grace to forgive. Say, I let go everyone I'm holding in my hands. Holding people. Hold them in your heart. I will never forgive my mother except I may have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people. I release right now I let go that boss in the name of Jesus I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department I release my escorts I release the members in my department I release Joshua Selman make sure you pray I release everyone who has offended me because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 32 is there. And then give us Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Luke 6, 37. Let's hurry up. Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do I mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people I wish I would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is God speaking to us yes I have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way I am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say, i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance 
your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world will be a sad place <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world I am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor I benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance Colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 3 is called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you will need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this oh god change them wonderful prayer but they have their wills if they don't change does that mean you will not move forward tolerance number six the sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved you maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship you must be a contributor there are parasitic relationships relationships are meant for mutual benefit maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life no Ejimi is my friend he contributes greatly in my life I contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationship's lifespan is very small it will never please hear this this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and I said no no I want to be your friend it's just that I am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring as a guy what value are you going to bring even the church and Christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we we we're we not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that it can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please I want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of God it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for God if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this I love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but I can't be close to you 
relationships are based on contributions i want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and he said lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what i will get in as much as i have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. If five people come into your life, not love relationship now necessarily, five people come into your life, none of them can stand two weeks. The problem is you, not them. Are we together? Hatred, stirred up strife, but love covereth. How many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life <sighs> apostle why are you angry can you no i've been delivered. been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples 
if you have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that i love them with all my heart i love the leaders they know it i'm lavish about it i love them with all my heart how could i ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no first john 4 verse 20 and then we round up first john 4 verse 20 god has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is joshua selman if joshua selman says i love god like many christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did he just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors will experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving god and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why i honor the lord for the ministers around i mean reverend dr tende is here god bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time i see them come visit like this i am very blessed love there are times i pick up my phone and i just send all my pastor friends text messages and i just tell them how are you how is the work the lord bless you the lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. I say, has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know, that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and said what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i say you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these arrogant men of God. I will not pick if I'm him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen bless you and I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. My sister, remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. 
I met you and you are reminding me today. No. You must invest in relationships. You must love. Brothers and sisters, I stand by the integrity of God's word. And I tell you this. If you practice these things before last koinonia, it would have changed your life. There are some of you, this is what you need. This is the revelation you need to enter the next level. It's not like the job cannot come. There are many people now that admission will start. You're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you because when a man loves you everything he has loves you too if a millionaire loves you his money loves you too an anointed man loves you his anointing will love you there are anointings that reject people yes that's why people don't receive we are going to pray and you are going to cry to the Lord and say Lord the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you, or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable, or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? hallelujah praise the lord i like us to pray i've listed these areas you know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with god in the next one minute please swallow your pride and cry to god and say i obtain mercy i obtain mercy lord i have not paid the price to know you i am lazy spiritually and otherwise i have not committed myself to pressing into the things of god there's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've not committed myself to transiting mentally. I'm still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me, ideas that are responsible for my pain, ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I'm a product of my mindset. I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life driven good opportunities in my life lift your voice and pray i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace no more laziness from tonight i commit myself to personal development lord i receive grace to be skillful i receive grace to be skillful i receive grace to be skillful Lord, I give grace to be excellent, grace to be competent, grace to be excellent, grace to be competent, grace to be excellent, grace to be competent. Finally, pray for relationships. Lord, all the areas that you have touched tonight, I receive grace. I declare that I'm free. The Bible says, he who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I declare that I'm free from offense. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from gossiping, backbiting, ill-spoken words against people. I only seek the good of another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, I let go every offense. I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny. 
and in the name of Jesus no power of hell will stop me hallelujah and we're standing here only because and we're standing here only because you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked the sin it was over you made a way hallelujah there are people here listen home and abroad their entire families are earning 200,000 but every week they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone I heard of a woman 70,000 naira every week God is my witness they spend on is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that and there is no guarantee the person you see how the devil works until all your money finishes then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble how many of you right now nobody to help you in your life lift your voice in one minute and cry cry for the help of God please koinonia pray pray hallelujah 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 prayer point number two listen listen i want us to break out of circles tonight are we together i'm going to minister to you but there are people here you are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life nobody rises beyond the level go to school or not it's a pattern you must break don't watch it happen and say it's all right nothing solves itself by itself you must engage it with faith lord this poverty thing i've seen it in my family we are not lazy people but i'm seeing it come this lack of being serious with god lift your voice and break every cycle lift your voice and command accept yourself Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you 
whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when an accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points before i begin to minister to us listen hallelujah jesus said satan come to me and does not find anything of himself if satan finds what belongs to him in you he's authorized to destroy you we are going to pray and we are going to say lord whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny i apply the blood i invoke the mystery of the blood lift your voice and pray legal access i apply the blood are you praying i apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of abel i apply the blood i apply the blood i apply the blood i apply the blood on my children i apply the blood pray on my husband on my wife on my business on my ministry on my job i apply the blood no divination no witchcraft no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail standing keep standing everyone we are going to pray now i tell you i'm angry in my spirit luke 18 verse 1 please quickly luke 18 verse 1 and he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint verse 2 there's something I'm looking for saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man verse 3 and there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary stop there God is a God of vengeance listen listen I know that's the nasty side of God but the God I serve is not only merciful God, there are people who don't need mercy they need vengeance you don't pray if you don't believe it but let me tell you something there is a god of vengeance he said let god arise and let all his enemies be scattered lift your voice and cry lord avenge i cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life my family Koinonia pray Arise Soko Topakaya Righteousness and justice At the foundations of his throne Oh God of vengeance Arise Oh God of vengeance Arise against the wicked Oh God of vengeance Arise Oh God of vengeance Arise against evil doers. Arise against them that seek to feed 
on the flesh of your people. Hallelujah. Listen. There was a man in the book of Esther called Haman. Have you heard about Haman? That man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God. Not just the Jews. The agenda of God. The apple of his eyes. And then the Bible says through a lot of activities. When that plot was gotten, the king sent and he said they should go and hang him he already built a gallow in advance in advance we live in a wicked world brothers and sisters let me tell you it's not all about vengeance but there is a dimension of it that is necessary if you must break through the wickedness of men is beyond imagination you are going to pray it again lord there are powers that have tied down my life and my family Arise, O oh God of vengeance. Arise, O oh God of vengeance. Arise, O oh God of vengeance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I was told the story of a woman, Pastor Jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no, you rejoice in my pain. The God of vengeance will arise for you. I tell you. Only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. How many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends? They lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check. Sign them off. Say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia i know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when judas came to kiss jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today they kissed you with a stupid advice and that's that's what has landed your life today they told you stop tightening. these men of god are crooks they have destroyed your life Are we together? Tonight, I want us to engage the word. To engage the word with your spirit. If you insist, brothers and sisters, God will give you a breakthrough. If you insist, God will give you a breakthrough. Are we together now? I want you to pray one last prayer. And then I'll begin to minister by the spirit. Lord, visit the root cause of my challenges. I may not know what it is I only know the effect oh God go to the root he says every tree the axe is placed at the root every tree my father has not planted Lord go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life the root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands the root cause
Are you praying? Shabakata la bosu. Rekete koto shobre yere balala balala balala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If after tonight's meeting, you return with a testimony, nobody will ask you to run to the house of God. You will go by yourself. Do you know how many, why many people never seek God? The truth is they are tired of lack of results. They are tired of it. Jumping around, doing all kinds of things. Yes, you don't love God just for results. But you've heard me say it again. At a point in your Christian experience, results must come as consolations to your serving God. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit us tonight. Let me make an altar call. Let's start with the altar call first. So that we'll finish right now. Please, everyone standing, no moving around. Outside your attention. There are people right here. Everything we boast of is in Christ. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee. Please listen very carefully. If you are not in Christ, there is no guarantee whatsoever. Are we together now? so you are here we are talking about witchcraft you have joined us to pray congratulations but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation because when a man is not in christ the bible says he's in the kingdom of darkness the very domain of darkness are we together now so when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith there is a spiritual transfer it is only on that basis you can challenge darkness there are two cate categories of people very quickly i'm going to make the altar call quickly when you come pastor jakes will lead you in prayer and then we'll take over and fly tonight and trust god to take us to a realm where we will never return never return to this level in the name of jesus you are here and you are saying man of god is as if you are just prophesying to me you are right it's you i'm speaking to and i'm going to make an altar call one maybe two three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can can god give me a new beginning absolutely no one has made it in my family you will be the first if and only you receive him he says as many as believed in him even to them that i mean as many as received him even to them that believed in him he gave them power to become power to become you do not have the power but you have the will and you can choose right now i'm going to make an altar call whether you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time or you want to rededicate your life man of god i gave my life to christ but somehow things have gone haywire no problem you are welcome if you are outside run like there's fire on the mountain any of the overflows you are inside here you run out i will count one to five very quickly one run like there's fire on the mountain if you are thinking about it go back to your seat Give Jesus praise. Please clear the way for them. There are people running outside. Let Jesus Christ step into your destiny. Koinonia, can you motivate them? Appreciate them as they come. Don't let any friend tell you why you're disgracing yourself. Shame the devil over your life tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. Just make that step of faith and come quickly run to Jesus run to Jesus keep coming keep coming there are still more people there are still more people if you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you leave him alone and come run to Jesus
Hallelujah. Kiss every one of us in front. Can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus. Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as their hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's book of life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just the moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please, let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister I have a sister or so, someone inside and someone in the overflow outside. The power of God is going to come on that person now. God is bringing a strange deliverance. I'm seeing a strange deliverance. Bring the person one inside, one outside. I just want to speak to them. Please quickly, we have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seeing in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting visit us in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. 
a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. 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 Doesn't mean other people are not being touched. But particularly visitors. Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies, in the name that is above all names whoever under the sound of my voice inside and outside if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life as we shout that name jesus there will be an eruption of fire in this place and all of a sudden god will begin ministering to people are you ready now at the count of three one two they must go from the hiding place. They must depart from the hiding place. They must depart from the hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit. I command every devil. Strange spirits tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Being broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, shakatabakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. That spirit, I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. Bring the money out. There's a mighty deliverance happening to her. Delay over your family. Broken, 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 broken by the spirit. Hello, Madonna. Hello, give 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me a strange instruction. Please, sisters, lay your hands on your womb. Lay your hands on your stomach. Something remarkable is going to happen here right now. There is a kind of deliverance God is doing. I don't know what I'm even doing. But Lord, I pray right now. This is not for everybody. But I am seeing the Lord is instructing that they lay their hands and I'm going to pray a prayer for you. You'll be surprised. Every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of Jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now. One, two, three. Release them now. 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 Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Hallelujah. Johnson. Johnson. I'm hearing a name Johnson. 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 We are still praying, please. Johnson. My God, I tell you, I see this fire falling on sisters. I don't know what it is with ladies. God is God is ministering. A serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully I'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are I'm prophesying now and I'm praying for you the power of God is looking for those people the power of God is looking for those people you rise to a level and fall you rise to a level and fall Lord in the name of Jesus inside and outside wherever you are I release that fire like a messenger to your life like a messenger to your life I cast that witchcraft now I cast that witchcraft now hallelujah the Lord is showing me a vision my God hold on I'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of God is coming on small children in this place I'm seeing children being delivered some initiated into occultism some initiated into this let's just walk the way God is father in the name of Jesus I speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation wherever they are don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting now wherever they are inside and outside i'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage I set them free now I set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him
Kai, there is hardship in your family and the Lord is asking me to cause it right now in the name of Jesus I cause hardship let the anointing of the spirit come on you now I cause that spirit the spirit of hardship I cause you now I cause you now I cause you now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest I want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please I want to pray for you right now the Lord is giving me that instruction very quickly I want to pray for you I'm seeing a lady who is AS God is about to change her genotype now 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 a dramatic change of genotype from AS to SS from AS to AA by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah please if you come from a family where no one in your family is working lift your hands nobody no job nobody just please just do what i'm asking you to do let's save time just lift your hands nobody at all is working no matter what happens just lift your hands i want to pray for you lift your hands i want to pray for you jesus 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 i'm i'm looking at hands lifted and and for some of the hands i'm seeing like a rope this is not necessarily you this is a representation of your family and i want to pray for you in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Get ready for the power of God. Right now, wherever you are, even those who didn't lift their hands, I decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I release them. I release them. I release their jobs. I release their jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we end joblessness here right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people. One, seven, one, seven, one, seven. At the count of four, this is the instruction God gives me unusual access to illumination lord where are they inside and outside one two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation on common access to the secrets of the kingdom on common access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of Jesus I don't know you huh but an anointing will come upon your life today and God is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations I release the gifts of the Spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters 
stir up the waters I release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts strange manifestations of power of power healing anointings healing anointings I activate healing anointings right now healing anointings step into it step into it outside inside step into it God is releasing mantles mantles of healing ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on I'm still praying I'm still praying God wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing God wants to release there are many more people I'm not seeing them receive it yet father you want to release this grace there is such a grace as the healing anointing I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado may the power of God come on you now everyone everyone everywhere men women take it take it take it fire upon your spirit Hello, I don't know how we are going to manage this now ushers there is a prophecy for you the Lord says I should tell you from now as you hold people and as you shake them there will be a transference on every one usher I'm prophesying now that's why I say I don't know what we'll do ushers ushers receive that mantle receive that mantle a strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles. Hallelujah. We'll soon pray for the sick. But please, everyone, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want to pray. I'm seeing people here. The anointing for business and entrepreneurship. Just keep your hands. That's why. Please keep your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't say I'm not calling to a businessman. That's none of your business. Just listen to what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. It's a grace. It's a grace. I believe maybe in the course of the service, we'll call a Jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly, truly upon your life. Lift your hands. Brothers and sisters, there is a grace for the marketplace. You don't go there through desire. It's not that you are a money monger, you just go, but strange ideas strange insight do you know i'm seeing a number four and one 41 this will affect many people inside and outside whether you're a businessman or not is not what i'm asking you that grace will locate you where you are a grace for the marketplace lord in the name of jesus inside and outside all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now I release it 
supernatural access 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 to business strategies access to ideas take it right now receive it receive it it's coming on people receive it receive it receive it is coming on you so that you will go and prosper 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 there is a woman one of our mothers this grace that I'm talking about is coming on you now now one of our mothers one of our mothers is receiving that grace God is releasing that grace whether you are inside or outside whoever it is I release that grace now there is a woman I'm seeing in the spirit you must take that grace now you must take that grace now on common ability on common ability on common insight for the works of your hands to begin to produce fruit hallelujah hallelujah listen look at me please help them how many of you are trusting god to restore something that has left your life it can be anything how many of you are trusting god i want to release that grace now and i want you to believe it some of you had destiny help us but something happened and they left your life some of you had quality relationships but it left your life some of you had finances but it left your life some of you even had certain levels of graces the lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Kai, this is going to land on people's head i'm saying this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gifts endowments for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back i invoke the grace that he has put upon my life i prophesy strange restoration i call it by name and i command it back to your life i call it by name everything you once were that you now are not i command you to become it now i command you to become it now i release that grace i release that grace receive it i release that grace i release that grace hallelujah now listen listen there are some of us hear me you have been doing certain things but the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life this is a very serious prayer i want to pray for you you have been doing business with the brain of a money monger but not the grace for the marketplace you have been singing only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of david i want to release the anointing of your office the anointing that has to do with your function please i want you to believe what i'm praying hear me hear me hear me it's one thing david was anointed to step into his office are you anointed for what you are doing i know you are working you want promotion is there an unction you are working with or are you just working with certificate at the count of three i want you to shout jesus there will be distribution of graces it's like an alignment the anointing the oil of your call the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you father in the name of jesus i pray right now whoever is functioning without an anointing functioning without the oil i stand upon this ground and i prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two 
three. Receive that grace now. Take it. Take it. Grace. Grace for your academics. Grace for the ministry. Grace. The words you speak turns things around. Help me. The chains are gone. God help me now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed and they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself physically. Running speed physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now, right now, I command you to run, run in the spirit, catch up, catch up, catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release speed, I release speed, I release speed, speed to your life, speed to your destiny, speed to your life, speed to your destiny. Your life speak to your destiny the words you speak come things around your arms run like Elijah run like Elijah you took away the chain Much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen. Please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on please everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now we are going to be very fast about this number one. Number two. Please. If you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones please i permit you put on your phone and call them tell them to send it as a text message write it we're going to be praying here tonight and we're going to be asking the fire of god to fall on request don't assume if you have not written it no problem settle down think well and write you're here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we're going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise god thank god pastor jakes is here a jimmy is here hallelujah praise god hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there 
for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and pastor jakes will be down outside there praise the lord benga you go with pastor jakes you will help pastor jakes outside um pastor alpha you'll be outside just help them and then um who, who is around again is Femi around okay so you can just come and help me here so let's do it that way very fast very very fast if there are more people there's a promise is here michael is here so maybe you can add one okay promise just follow promise follow pastor jakes michael follow a jimmy please let's do it very very fast while hold on please don't be distracted don't cut the flow we are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then i'll speak over your life many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated don't be distracted i expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit hallelujah for those stationed at different points whether at the back any of the overflows i like you to believe god for a miracle right now believe god for a miracle you can see someone like our daddy he has come with his crutch believing god to walk you believe you walk sir you believe the lord will heal you so get ready to walk you see there are people stationed around we are going to pray this will be very very fast and then the lord will help us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah father thank you let me start with our daddy first how long have you been like this sir six months stroke who brought him who came with our daddy you came by yourself sir came by myself by yourself from where sir first station here yeah. you cannot walk i can move with you this walking stick which but of the legs has a problem this is the leg this is stroke yes can you lift it no i can't i can't the hand i can't lift hold it. on look at this sir look at me you believe in jesus i believe you believe in the power of I jesus believe. lord i introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now in the name of jesus christ huh the lord will begin to touch you your hands everything is already dead sir lift your leg lift your leg just do what i'm asking you to do lift your leg lift it lift your leg lift your leg start try to walk gently come come try to walk gently come give me the stick look at me look at your stick come come Don't be afraid, come. Lift your leg. Look at this. Look at what is happening to this man. Came with this thing. Look at this. 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 chair and just keep him let him sit down while the power of God touches him sir you came here by yourself um trust him okay and the boy has gone okay he's somewhere in the name of Jesus Christ the God you believe has begun this miracle you will perfect it look for a stick for him there hold your stick by yourself and go don't put it on the ground hold it up walk by yourself and go give Jesus praise look at what God is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Someone is still sick here. Someone is still sick here. I'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me. Someone is still sick here. No, 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 no. I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers roll down choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. You came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is sick here. Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother. Supernatural miracle. is coming to that person. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You are holding her, but something is leaving her to you now. You who is holding her, something is leaving her to you. There is there is virtue. I see a transference of grace from a Jimmy's wife to you. You are doing your work as an usher, but you have received something very strange and very powerful. You see, let me tell you something. If, if you do not, you see, hold on. Walking in the anointing is more than having it. Having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing. If not, you will be anointed, but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing. It's like a man shooting anyhow. You must have discernment. Many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who are being touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and Mata, two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing a strange Hallelujah. God, God is giving two of them strange favor strange favor I see strange favor strange favor America God is giving you access I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head and God is saying he's giving you strange access strange access strange access strange access strange access Muas, God is giving strange favor strange favor strange favor hallelujah I don't know what I'm saying but this is a word for someone and the Lord is saying why make it next year when I have destiny to be this year. Why make it next year? 
when I have destined you to be this year. This is the word of the Lord. Why make it next year? This is a word for many people. When I've destined it to be this year. As I speak to you, the word is for you. The power of God will locate you. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. It's the year of triumph. It's the year of triumph. Why make it next year? Just allow me to do my stupidity. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year. Why make it next year? When I have destined it to be this year, my God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have been disappointed with God right now. You actually came to help the ushers. You came expecting that I would directly call your case and you, you, you prayed this thing but now it looks like we're about to pray and I didn't call your case the power of God is coming on you now now as a sign that God had now wherever you are he's locating you now now I command that spirit to leave you. I see you in the spirit. Go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands now and I command. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still praying outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a listen. There are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations. God, see, let me tell you right now, if the anointing comes on you. Just know that is the answer to your prayer. This is not a special once the anointing comes on you. Just know that your prayer has been answered. You understand? This is what it doesn't mean if the anoint if you don't fall down, it's not answered. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this is how God is choosing to confirm to some people now, as I'm talking, that your prayer, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how difficult your prayer is. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What do you mean? Please, okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, leave her. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to to get a rakata kata bakata. So poto so peke te te te. Miracle so God. Testimony so God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. We prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud. I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it. Moving upon it. Moving upon it. The Spirit of God is moving over the prayer request, visiting families, releasing angels, releasing angels, visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence, visiting the prayer request. Savior, 
He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus. About a blessedness that the heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed. It has been ratified and it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we have decreed. We have a lot of content to share. Hallelujah. So we want to teach you to subscribe to this channel. As I well, just feel as like, like doing has, this is, hit that notification I, I don't bell always do this, but I want to prophesy over your life. Because we know that whatever and content here is going to set you on calls at all the time. It's going to make friends, you attain but the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. Want you to attain. Thank they you. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy God is saying, I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life. Connections with gifted men. In the name of Jesus. And Pastor Jakes, God is giving you influence. Strange influence. Strange influence. Strange influence. Strange influence. It's a very strange apostolic dimension of influence. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless them. Wherever your wives are, I bring them into this experience. Now. 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 Wherever they are, I prophesy to Tosin wherever she is. And I speak to hope. You are one. So I prophesy as it happens to you. I bring your wives into this experience in the name of Jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once I spotted Lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from Abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the Lord is saying I should prophesy a release I told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the Lord is saying I should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension 
that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaskapas katapas katapas legete to soto pretekes kobaria a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter and as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter in the name of jesus a new chapter listen i prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the holy ghost Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. We're rounding up. Who is this girl? Come. You. God has chosen to visit you. Come. Come and stand here. God is wiping your tears. This prayer I'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny. I lay my hands upon you and I command the gates to be opened now. I stood there and I saw you and the Lord said I should open that gate. I lay my hands upon you. I command the gates to be open. Be open right now. Be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be open right now. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Please, this lady with uh, yellow, blue, you come. I don't know you, but the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Lift your hands. This is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings. I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command. Uh -uh. I'm praying for you, but I'm seeing my hand on you. I'm praying for you, but I'm seeing my hand on you. Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open and I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out and I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your people. All three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now. The Okalo family. Step into that grace. Open, 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 open. I open that door. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. An age-long witchcraft broken over your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down. Whatever has covered your glory, I speak it right now in the name of jesus let it be open 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 i unveil your glory i unveil your glory i unveil your glory shaka ta 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 i unveil your glory i unveil your glory tonight is a strange night Please receive every prophetic word that I'm going to pray for you. Ah, just allow me to do one more thing. Ah, the Spirit of God, I have not seen this in a while. I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria and I see Benway State. The Spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now, touching people. 
you know how it happens when I speak. Benway, Benway, miracles. Locate them now, oh God. People from Benway, Benway, strange grace, strange grace. I break witchcraft, Benway. I'm seen Benway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know O to go, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? Or to buy or something. The power of God, I'm seeing that. Going to that area. The Lord is bringing a miracle. Ends with an A. Whoever comes from that region, in the name of Jesus, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Benway. 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 I don't know why God is doing this, but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now strangely matato sotota emo state miracles miracles breakthroughs signs wonders miracles miracles to emo state by the spirit of the living god hallelujah If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, something is happening right now. Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, Cross River, help her, help her, please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone the ministry of signs and wonders let me talk to you my dear this lady looking at me you come the Lord has located you today come lift your hands the Lord says I should tell you for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame he's bringing laughter to your life for shame He's bringing laughter to your life. Lift your hands. We're rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening... You don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge, every challenge that has refused to leave, I prophesy upon it right now. I command that it comes to an end in your life now. Now, now, that fair lady, come, this lady, Diana, run, come, lift your hands, I'm still praying, in the name of Jesus, listen, whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life, I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've prayed for, for deliverance prayer. And I saw you inside a cave. You are just trying to push the door. That's why I asked you to come out. Let me. I don't know you. Do I know you? Where did you come from? Damagadi. Where? Damagadi. Otuko. Where is that? I don't know. 
Yes, 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 I'm going to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough. Two things. God is going to throw somebody out of your life. Yes. I'm not a prophet yes. of group, but it will happen. Yes. He will reach three days. Yes. Huh? Yes. Throw yes. completely so that you can move forward. Yes. I hold your hands in the name of Jesus. Every deceiver of your destiny will drive them far from you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You need to love Jesus with all your heart. Right? You are a nice person, but your relationship with Jesus. You, you can get teachings after this, but I want to prophesy on your life. God is taking somebody, not death, oh, just driving somebody out, an unwanted person out of your life. I prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen. I lay my hands on you and I provoke the heavens to release that favor for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over every family represented here. Whether your nuclear family, your extended family. Hold on. I don't know what has gone wrong, but in the name of Jesus, within now and miracle service match, dramatic turnaround for families. Dramatic turnaround for families. Dramatic turnaround for families. In the name of Jesus. One of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. I want to pray for you. I don't know where they are. But one thing I know is they never come on their own. They are called by prophecy. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy Hello. to the west. Scriptures exalt the, the helper of, of your destiny, I command them to appear I now. To that to I command them to appear them now. I command them to appear now. I command them to appear now. We believe that you are going to read the blessings thereof if you attend on, to these words as well. That you will keep these job. words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance the Lord your eyes Look are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed all the Holy we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you a blessed and don't in forget one month, to like 30 wow. days Thank I you. stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results ah, yeah, 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 yeah. step into those results step into those results strange dimensions of results hallelujah Whoever has despised you, whether to your knowing or not to your knowing, I pray, may God put them on the scene as he lifts you. May they watch your rising as God honors you. I pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down. Prayer life down. Your praise and worship life down. Fasting down word life down in the name of jesus christ i activate fresh grace receive it fresh grace fresh fire outside receive it fresh grace fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah wherever your prosperity is i pray may listen listen hagar carried ishmael and they were roaming around the desert they said there was no water but when an angel appeared all of a sudden they saw water that you have not seen it does not mean it's there it's not there i open your eyes to see where god has anointed to bring you financial blessings i open your eyes in the name of jesus i open your eyes to see where god has placed your prosperity hallelujah the plague of death that is looming around this nation 
looking for people and families is listen it's like a graph it rises then sometimes it Dearly relaxes beloved, i'm praying i hope you have never called your message. name i'm prophesying I want you to keep doing something whether in the secret or the open of God, to, to invoke to death song. upon your life i command the earth to open and swallow them i command the earth to open and swallow them Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. Then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, the keep sharing abroad and let all keep the sharing. The unction and the grace See you again. that Bye. granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus. Shababa Satalakata. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it. I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection listen i want to pray something that is very powerful in your life listen when you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying now the bible says defend you in the day of trouble there are many of us if for any reason things go wrong in your life you are in trouble there is nobody that can arise as a defense but i'm prophesying to you right now in the name of jesus christ whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors i call them forth right now in the name of jesus may god raise men to be a wall of defense for you in this wicked um wicked state that we are living right now in this country people say if you don't have anybody and honestly speaking somebody can get up and come and seize your land you and your land and your paper they will collect it because there is no defense i'm prophesying again quarter to shame may god raise a defense for you and finally i want to pray the prayer of jabez for you many of us ha, many of us have not studied honor is not money listen listen there are many rich people with no honor are we together there are many well-to-do people with no honor do you know what honor is honor is when god anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation so for every one person who talks nonsense there are thousands honor jabez said oh that the mother bore him in sorrow you brought shame for me so i call you jabez honor is more than money brothers and sisters the bible says a good name is better than riches i pray the mantle of honor that by the grace of god has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all name for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that mantle right now take that mantle right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah wave your hands to jesus and praise him wave your hands to jesus and praise him. wave your hands to jesus and praise him wave your hands thank you jesus we bless you we lift our hands to the great I am. Oh, yes the character of the spirit must be at work in your life your conversation you cannot be speaking as if you are not born again and then when you come to church you say hallelujah no you must speak like a christian are you listening to me say amen, amen.
inside and outside say amen. amen you must speak like a christian hallelujah you must act like a christian act like jesus is lord of your life anything cannot be it be disciplined you are a leader and be humble say i receive grace for humility if you are an arrogant person in this place i set you free from that spirit of arrogance be humble listen make sure by love you serve people are you listening to me the greater one in the kingdom gone are the days of all these men of god ah protocol for me uh -uh. the greater one is the one who can kneel down and serve are you listening to me take away that wrong mindset of ministry that has been given to people oh you are the woman of god you are the man of god bend down let your work speak for you let to wash the feet of others consider others better than yourself are you listening to me say i'm a christian if you are coming here for the first time let me prophesy into your life please leave your seat and come out inside and outside appreciate them very quickly please come out here quickly come out here quickly please clap for them they are coming ushers lead them to come to the front you are welcome give them a koinonia welcome we'll soon be out of this place now hallelujah quickly quickly thank you jesus come on koinonia will you appreciate them hallelujah 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 please keep coming we'll pray for you i want to thank every one of you for coming this is koinonia hallelujah especially for many of you who came all the way thank you so much for coming we appreciate you we receive you hallelujah we are happy we are proud of you we want to pray for you that this will be the beginning of unusual hunger for god that this will be the beginning of passion for the things of the spirit and that this will be the beginning of an unlimited life of breakthrough in the name of jesus saints of god stretch your hands towards them as we pray we are praying for you may the lord bless you we pray that god will make you better than you are in the name of jesus for those of you who have been healed and touched, I pray that your miracle will remain in the name of the Lord.